Africa is rising and India is betting on Africa's rise. We have a shared past, not always uh, a happy history. India, as I said, the most populous country in the world, the fifth largest economy, a four trillion dollar approximate uh, GDP. For us, the reordering of the world, the rebalancing, the multipolarity of the world will not be complete until Africa takes its due place. Having spoken about India-Nigeria, let me make a larger point in respect of Africa. Africa is rising and India is betting on Africa's rise. We are betting on Africa's rise because by any objective assessment, today there is so much going for Africa in terms of demography, in terms of resources, in terms of ambition, in terms of increasingly uh, of policy alignments that clearly portent a very different, a much more positive future in the very short term. Now, we are betting on Africa because, as the uh, president of NIBC reminded us, we have a shared past, not always uh, a happy history, not between us, but between us and some other people. But it is a history which has engendered an enormous solidarity. And that solidarity today makes me say very clearly that for us, when we speak about a changing global order, we clearly today, India, as I said, the most populous country in the world, the fifth largest economy, a four trillion dollar approximate uh, GDP. For us, the reordering of the world, the rebalancing, the multipolarity of the world will not be complete until Africa takes its due place. And we speak of it often, certainly in the diplomatic world, in terms of, you know, there will be reform of the United Nations, who will have a seat, how will it go? And all of that is very important. But I would say to all of you that rebalancing, reordering a new global order will only happen when the core of it is economic, which is the rise of Africa has to be the economic rise of Africa. Now, that obviously presents choices because uh, it is very difficult to go up in the global order by being a market for others or, by, or just by being a provider of resources. So the value that India brings, and it's a value today I think which is reflected in the room and in the conversations that will happen, which is how do we today invest in Africa, how do we manufacture in Africa, how do we produce in Africa, how do we value add in Africa? And I suggest to you, ladies and gentlemen, that is really the value, you know, that is the special nature of the relationship today between India and Africa. That we are prepared today to partner in this range of activities of production, of value add, of research, of localization, of the employment which will come with it, and of addressing the socio economic needs which are very similar to ours. We are all on the same journey today. Some of us are a little bit ahead, but you know, at the end of the day, everything that we are going through currently and we have been through and we will go through are exactly what is your journey as well. So my message to you today is at a time, especially after the COVID, when we have all discovered the dangers of depending on faraway geographies for our basic needs. Because we all had that anxiety for those years. When everything which we assumed internet global trade will provide very smoothly did not arrive on our shores. That today, if there is a push for local production, for, as I said, greater value add, if we need more resilient and reliable supply chains, if we have to share technology, India is your partner. And these are not nice words to be said at a conference. The proof 
of our commitment are in 200 development projects across the continent and another 70, 80 which are underway.